sometimes we can suspect our battery is not functioning as it should so in this video I'm going to run through a few things you can check as long as you've got a voltmeter that can measure volts DC first thing to do is check the voltage voltmeter turned on to volts DC my range is automatic yours might have to be set on 20 put the red positive lead on positive on the battery and the black lead on negative on the battery my measure is 8.96 that's way too low to start the engine so I'll have to charge it up manually ideally your battery should be above 12.6 volts if your voltage is lower than that it still should start as long as it's above about 12.2 volts if your battery is between 12.2 and 12.4 volts it will need charging which normally takes place when you start the engine and the alternator kicks in lower voltages and you may need to charge it manually anyway after charging it up a little bit to 12.2 it should now start let's just try it key in the ignition outer gear clutch down yay it does work but I'm not going to leave it at that it's not fully charged yet I need to get it over 12.6 volts so I'll leave it charging overnight but before I do that I'll just make sure the terminals are clean and secure which as you can see these are no signs of corrosion if there is just take the leads off and clean them up I like to use some wire wool for this clean inside the terminal and then the leaded battery top refit the terminal and make sure they're nice and tight and a good tip is that you can use some baking soda with a little bit of water to neutralize any acid that's on top of the terminals then wipe that off make sure it's nice and clean I'm going to start testing the battery now but if you've finished and you've got a new battery and everything's fine then just finish off by putting a little bit of silicon grease on top of the terminals or in my case a little bit of grease right back to the testing so I'll leave it charging overnight so I've let the battery charge overnight put the uh, voltage meter on put this stand on and it seems to be Right, so about 14 volts, so the charge is still on, I'll just turn that off. Now the voltage will just drop down now, I'll, I'll leave it for 10 minutes and see where it settles at. It seems to be settling at 12.87 volts after about 10 minutes. And that's probably still holding some residual voltage from the charging, so I'd expect that to drop a little bit further. But what I'll do now is a, a simple test by uh, loading some electrical equipment up within the car such as uh, turning the lights on, now I'll turn the uh, fan on, put that on full blast, leave that on for about 30 seconds and you'll see the voltage drop on the meter. Now I'll turn those systems off and see the voltage rise. The quicker it'll rise the better the battery is. Let the voltage settle out and in my case the voltage is settling uh, just a, a little bit above 12.7 volts and the next test I'm going to do is a, a load test based on the starting current it's often referred to as cold cranking amps which is the biggest demand on the battery and is the single most complaint about batteries failing when they can't start the car and you can do this with a, a voltmeter um, mine doesn't record minimum maximum values but I can just videotape it which will give a good indicator of what the voltage will drop to when you start the engine so we'll give that a go now I'll just tape down the voltmeter to the air box so it won't rattle off ah, Uncle Bob said I've got to turn the display so you can see it that's better right start the car
it's certainly charging all right over 14 volts that's fine if it doesn't you just need to rev it a little bit to get it alternated to kick in I don't know if you saw that but I played back the video and I got the a reading of 9.77 volts for a few frames but then one frame went down to 8.9 something volts which isn't so good what you're looking for in this test is not to let the voltage drop below around 9.5 to 9 volts 9.5 volts is the, like the threshold for when the battery is going bad and anything below 9 volts you're looking at replacing the battery. Mine went down to 9.77 volts for a while uh, but did actually go down a little bit lower than that under 9 volts so I will test it again to see if that was uh, an anomaly or not. So the second time the voltage has gone down to 10.24 which is similar to the 9.77 so I'm happy with that. But as you can see there is a bit of an issue with uh, recording these low figures. As I say some meters do have that facility but it still gives you a good idea of the condition of the battery which in this case is okay. And this leads me on to a new device I've got to test which is the uh, battery tester a Top Don T100 sorry BT100 I guess BT stands for battery tester. This should make testing the battery a little bit easier. Looks like it comes in the same durable quality as the Top Don battery charger that I've got. This has got the same high quality clips and cable protectors. And I believe this one uh, doesn't even need batteries, it just powers itself from the battery itself. Which is a really good idea. Well, more to the point, I'm too tight to buy some batteries. So I'll just clip that onto the battery terminals. Which is easy to do with these clips. Right, there you go, power on, top down. Right, top down battery tester, 12.72 volts. I'll just check that against my voltmeter. Just a little bit of difference there, which might mean my voltmeter needs calibrating, as it hasn't, as I had it for quite a few years now. Right, press M or enter to enter the main menu. Up and down arrows, battery test. Enter. Right, you've got to put the type of battery it is. If it's an AGM or gel battery, it often says that on the top. I believe mine is a regular flooded battery. Press enter. Right, the current rating. It's got a few different types. CCA, CCA, cold cranking amps, cranking amps, CCA. Mine's got EN, I think which is very similar to cold cranking amps and it's marked on the top of my battery 780 amps so I'll just enter that and it's testing good battery green light 66% healthy internal resistance 4.4 milliohms the resistance of 4.4 milliohms is a little bit high which may indicate that the battery needs to be on charge a bit longer as the resistance will affect the overall, overall power of the battery as you can see it's 66% uh, and only giving out 632 amps although it doesn't have any problems starting but it should be nearer to 780 amps but I have let this battery go flat a couple of times as the car's been stood idle for a while so that probably has something to do with it so I'll have to put it on trickle charge for a while so I'll have to keep an eye on this battery Right, back to the menu. Uh, cranking test. Start engine. Right, I'll go do that. Now that's interesting. That comes back with uh, a voltage of 10.38 volts. Very similar to what I was getting with 10.24 volts. 
scroll down, do a charging test, press enter, press enter, loaded test, increase res per minute to 2500s, res per minute and keep it for 5 seconds, then press enter. Oh, I'm on my own. I wonder if I can do this on my own. Yeah, press enter and I'll go do that. Enter. Alright, that's worked. Loaded, unloaded. Charging normal. That's quite useful because if there's a big difference in there, it would show you the any anomalies with the regulator on the alternator. Review data. Right. And there we have it. Quite a nifty little device that. If you want one of these testers, I'll put a link in the description along with a time limited discount code. And I'll just show you one other test that indirectly affects the battery, which is the alternator. And it's always worth doing to see if there's any differences uh, at the alternator compared with measurements at the battery. What you want to look for is the large uh, contact at the back of the alternator. They're usually quite big and usually marked red. And that's where you want to put your positive lead. This being a, a Bosch alternator. And be careful not to catch any of the leads in any moving parts. Which is easily done when you measure this. So just be very careful. As you, as you are leaning over the engine. And you just need to put your negative lead either on the body of the alternator. Or a, an earth ground somewhere else on the engine. Once you've taken a measurement at the alternator, then you can move your leads over to the battery and you're just looking for any discrepancies for increased resistance, etc. As you can see, there's just a very slight difference in voltage and nothing to worry about as it will still charge the battery. Obviously, if you've got large discrepancies, then they need to be investigated. And there's other things that can affect the battery, such as parasitic draw. But I'll go into that in another video. There would have been a little bit of draw during these tests, because I had the car door open. And if you look down here, the light's on. So that will take some current. And it's these types of uh, devices that are, that are often left on, when they go faulty, that uh, can flatten your battery. A common one on the Fabia is the glove box light. So anyway, that wraps it up today, and I hope this helped you out, guys. Just to let you know, I've got lots more Fabia videos planned. It's just personal circumstances that are preventing me from doing more videos. But I will get back into it, so we can all benefit. I'm firmly committed to keeping the channel going, as my Auntie Mildred, Gertrude and Bob are all counting on it. And as always, thank you for watching. Jobs are good, hmm?